machine taller than the Eiffel Tower floating in the middle of the ocean. Another built directly on an earthquake fault line drills for oil in temperatures below minus 40. And one was designed with teeth, concrete blades made to smash icebergs before they can strike. These are oil rigs. Built in the harshest environments on Earth, Arctic seas, seismic zones, hurricane paths, these rigs weren't just made to work, they were made to survive the impossible. In this video, we'll take you inside four of the most extreme offshore rigs ever built, each one an engineering response to a different kind of natural threat. So, how do you anchor a steel tower to the seafloor beneath a mile of water? How do you move a 1,500-foot skyscraper across the ocean? And how do you stop a million-ton iceberg from tearing through steel and concrete? Let's find out. The Berkut platform in Russia lives up to its name. Berkut, meaning golden eagle in Russian, and not just in scale. Like the eagle it's named after, this structure was built to survive in brutal conditions, freezing seas, earthquakes, and crushing ice. Located in the remote Sea of Okhotsk, Berkut is one of the largest and heaviest fixed oil platforms ever built, with a total weight over 200,000 tons, and it rises 144 meters above the seabed, 1.5 times the height of the Statue of Liberty. It's one of the toughest structures ever planted at sea. Built in one of the most earthquake-prone regions on Earth, Berkut had to do more than just stand tall. It had to survive the ground moving beneath it. So how do you stop a massive oil rig from collapsing during a 9.0 earthquake? Engineers gave it a system borrowed from skyscrapers, friction pendulum isolators. Think of it like giving the platform knees. It doesn't fight the quake head on, it moves with it, bending just enough to stay upright and intact. That flexibility is what keeps it from cracking under pressure. It was the first Exxon Mobil operated rig to use them, setting a new benchmark for offshore seismic safety. The reinforced concrete base, weighing over 160,000 tons, was built near Vladivostok, then towed 2,000 kilometers to its final site. The steel top sides, weighing over 42,000 tons, were constructed in South Korea and shipped more than 2,600 kilometers across the sea before being installed offshore. The final assembly took place right there, out in the Okhotsk. The Kut's numbers are staggering. 52,000 cubic meters of concrete, 27,000 tons of steel rebar, and over 4,000 people involved in its construction. But it's more than just brute strength. This platform functions like a self-sustaining city at sea. It has four 15 megawatt gas turbines for power plus its own desalination system that turns seawater into drinking water, enough to support up to 237 crew members at a time. And if something goes wrong, one button shuts down everything. Pumps, generators, wells, operations. It's a last resort safety system built from hard lessons after past offshore disasters. Operating year-round in minus 43 degrees Celsius winters and 200 kilometers per hour winds, Berkut also faces a constant enemy, ice. So engineers equipped it with heated pipes and ice-resistant coatings to stop buildup underneath. That kind of pressure can shear steel, but not here. Even the waste has its place. Drilling fluids and dirty water are pumped back into depleted wells, reducing the risk of polluting the sea and helping protect the region's marine life, like the crabs and sea lions often seen near the platform's base. The coat was built to last, with operations expected to continue until 2050, and at a cost of $12 billion, it's not just an oil rig. It's one of the most resilient machines ever engineered. Next on the list is the iconic Hibernia platform, sitting 315 kilometers off the coast of Newfoundland, Canada. This isn't your typical offshore rig. Most oil platforms are built to handle storms, waves, or earthquakes. Hibernia had to be built for something else entirely, icebergs, the same kind that once sank the Titanic. Every year, hundreds of icebergs drift straight into Hibernia's path breaking off from Greenland and floating through the Grand Banks. 
So engineers didn't just design the platform to endure an impact, they built it to fight back. So how do you build an oil platform to smash icebergs head on? At the base of the platform is a belt of 16 massive serrated concrete teeth known as the ice wall. Each tooth is over a meter thick and reinforced with X and V shaped internal supports that channel the impact energy deep into the platform's core. These weren't designed to resist icebergs, they were built to break them apart. The jagged design helps deflect and dissipate the force of a collision, spreading it across the entire structure. Combined with the platform's immense weight and shallow location, the ice wall gives Hibernia a unique defense. It can take a direct hit from a 1 million ton iceberg without damage, and survive a 6 million ton impact with only repairable harm. It was the first offshore platform ever engineered for this kind of threat, and it's still one of the few that can stand up to moving walls of ice. At its core is a massive gravity-based structure, or GBS, an enormous reinforced concrete base that sits directly on the sea floor. After installation, the base was filled with over 400,000 tons of local iron ore magnetite, making it so heavy that it can't float a unique engineering feat that helped secure the platform against both waves and ice. Unlike floating rigs, it doesn't move. Its sheer weight and the force of gravity keep it anchored in place. But it's not just a foundation. Inside, the GBS also acts as a giant oil tank, capable of storing up to 1.3 million barrels of crude. That's roughly the size of a small oil tanker, built right into the base of the platform. Built in the 1990s and originally designed for 20 years of use, Hibernia is still going strong today, now expected to operate well beyond 2040 thanks to new drilling and reservoir technology. And it didn't come cheap. The total build cost was nearly 6 billion US dollars, making it one of the most expensive offshore platforms of its time. Hibernia may not be the tallest or the most famous oil rig in the world, but it's one of the toughest. A fortress designed to stand its ground in a minefield of ice. Now let's head to Norway, where you'll find one of the most jaw-dropping engineering feats in history. Troll A. At 472 meters tall, Troll A is the tallest structure ever moved by humans. It's taller than the Empire State Building, taller than the Eiffel Tower, and more than 300 meters of it is underwater, anchored deep into the North Sea. But what's even more remarkable is how it got there. Trolle wasn't built at sea. It was constructed inside a fjord in Vats, Norway, and then floated over 200 kilometers to its final location. But how do you float something taller than the Eiffel Tower without it tipping over? The platform's massive hollow concrete legs gave it just enough buoyancy to float, and at the same time, they were also heavy enough to keep it stable during the seven-day journey. Once in position, engineers filled the legs with water to sink the platform, and then used a unique anchoring system to lock it in place. Each leg is held down by six 40-meter-tall vacuum anchors, which literally suck the structure into the seabed keeping it stable against the massive storms and waves of the North Sea. While Trolle floated during its transport, it's now a gravity-based structure, fully self-supporting and anchored permanently to the ocean floor by its own weight and these powerful anchors. And the scale doesn't stop there. Those concrete legs were cast in a single continuous pour, creating seamless walls over a meter thick. The operation had to run non-stop for weeks because even a short pause could have weakened the entire structure. To keep the platform from shaking or swaying too much in rough seas, engineers added a special feature called a cord shortener. It's basically a big concrete box that connects the legs and helps absorb and reduce vibrations from waves, kind of like a shock absorber in a car. Each leg is also divided into watertight sections, which adds extra safety in case of damage. And yes, there's an elevator inside one of the legs that takes about nine minutes to go from the top all the way down to the sea floor. That's how deep Trolle really goes. In 2006, one of those legs became the stage for a world record, 
the deepest underwater concert ever held. British singer Katie Malua performed for two dozen oil workers, 303 meters below sea level. Above sea level, Trolle has living quarters for up to 211 people, thanks to an expansion added in 2010. It's like a small vertical city in the middle of the ocean. Trolle began producing natural gas in 1996 and has been a lifeline to Europe ever since. In 2024, the troll field hit a new record, 42.5 billion standard cubic meters of gas delivered in a single year, the highest ever from a Norwegian field. Over the years, the platform has been upgraded with new modules, compressors and control rooms, keeping production high even as pressure drops inside the reservoir. It was built for around 650 million US dollars in the early 1990s, not the most expensive rig on this list, but still a major investment for what was, at the time, a groundbreaking offshore platform. Today, Trolley stands as both a monument to engineering and a working machine buried beneath the waves, quietly powering millions of homes across Europe. Last but not least, we head to the Gulf of Mexico, about 260 kilometers, 160 miles, southwest of New Orleans, where you'll find one of the tallest fixed steel platforms ever built, Bullwinkle. From the seabed to the tip of its flare boom, Bullwinkle stands at an incredible 529 meters, 1,736 feet tall, with over 412 meters, 1,353 feet of that hidden beneath the surface. At the time of its installation, in 1988, it was the tallest offshore platform in the world and the second tallest manned structure ever built just behind the CN Tower in Toronto. Unlike floating rigs, Bullwinkle is fixed directly to the ocean floor, which meant the engineering had to be flawless. The massive steel jacket, the platform's main structural frame, was built in Port Aransas, Texas and assembled horizontally. It was loaded onto a 178-meter, 583-foot barge, towed out to sea, and then upended in a carefully choreographed operation using controlled flooding. Once vertical, it was lowered onto 28 steel piles, each about 1.5 meters, 5 feet in diameter, and 131 meters, 430 feet long, driven deep into the seabed like underwater stakes. The whole process took days of precision maneuvering, and a $500 million investment was riding on it. Bullwinkle has stood tall ever since, surviving decades of hurricanes, shifting sands, and constant ocean pressure. At its peak, the platform supported up to 60 well slots, with oil production reaching 50,000 barrels per day, and gas output of up to 90 million cubic feet daily. But Bullwinkle wasn't built to work alone. It serves as a hub for nearby satellite fields, including Troika, Rocky, Angus and Aspen, gathering oil and gas and channeling it through a vast pipeline system that feeds into the broader Gulf of Mexico infrastructure. Over its lifetime, Bullwinkle has produced more than 120 million barrels of oil and 185 billion cubic feet, 5.2 billion cubic meters of natural gas. Now, as Bullwinkle nears the end of its operational life, the platform is being prepared for a second chapter. Parts of the structure will be turned into an artificial reef, helping marine life thrive long after the drills go silent. Bullwinkle may be heading into retirement, but as one of the boldest offshore engineering feats ever attempted, its legacy will continue beneath the waves. From earthquakes to icebergs, these oil rigs weren't just built to drill, they were built to survive. Bakut bends with the earth. Hibernia breaks icebergs. Trolle floats on a concrete skyscraper. Bullwinkle still stands after decades underwater. So which platform impressed you the most? And would you ever set foot on one? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to see how humans survive in another extreme environment, check out our video on Antarctica's research stations. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more Megabuild stories. Thanks for watching.